Thank you very much, Juliet, for the uh, warm welcome. I'd like to start by saying that food is the most intimate experience that we have as human beings. And so... <laughs> And I, I, I know that everyone's thinking about that and thinking, really? But if you think about that, so let's, let's just unpack that, that statement a little bit. So three times a day, if not more, I mean, we are at a conference. And uh, let me assure you that on my Nuffield travels, it seemed to be a little bit more. Three times a day, we put food or fuel into our bodies. And I think probably one of the, the biggest learnings that I got out of my travels was, uh, and especially watching in the United States of, uh, particularly, how interested people are or have become on what they are actually putting in. And so if I look at this room here, we've got a lot of farmers. So to me, farming or, or being a farmer has probably become an antiquated term because once upon a time that was the person that looked after livestock, it was the person that harvested crops, etc, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Today, I'd like to think that we should actually look at ourselves as being food producers, because as food producers, we have a connection to the people that actually eat our product. As a second thought, the production and availability of food is such an essential part of life and its impact on natural resources so significant that wider world influences like politics, trade and social agendas have always had a connection to the food and agricultural sector. We've been through three, well, we are going through the third, but we've been through two major shifts in thinking about the production of agricultural commodities, producing more, producing more effectively and efficiently, which is where I think we're at in New Zealand currently, and where I think we're going, which is producing more effectively, efficiently and sustainably. We need to remain profitable in order to have the ability to continue making the environmental investments that are required to protect our environment. And that's basically the starting point of where I started my travels. So this is where I come from. This is uh, sh uh, the Shelley Beach Farm. It's on the Kuiper Harbour. And just really quickly, it's an, environment that in, it's an environment that's under significant pressure. There was a report two days ago, as it happens, that said that uh, 10 years ago, there was 10 major scallop beds in the Kuiper Harbour. Today, there's one because sediment runoff that has occurred over a period of time has swamped most of the scallop beds in the harbour. Being filter feeders, those scallops are under significant pressure because they're not getting the nutrients, they're not getting the light that they once did. Why does that affect me? Because it's people like myself, it's other farms in the district that need to invest behind the farm gate in their environment to make sure that we're not impacting the wider environment that everyone else uses. So the farm here is a 550 hectare beef finishing farm which was taken over six years ago. When we took over there was hardly a fence along a drain, uh, there was no fencing around native bush areas, there was no uh, protection of, of wetland and other areas. Part of my farming philosophy and uh, you know, a quote that really resonated with me while I was travelling is that we need to remember that we don't uh, farm, uh, sorry, if I get the quote right, we know that we are not given the world by our fathers or our parents, but we've, we borrow it from our children. And to me, I think we need to, to recognise the fact that uh, we need to leave the environment in a manner that can be utilised tomorrow not ruined by the practices that we do today. Forgetting all other measurable figures, we need to, uh, we need to make sure that we leave you know, the uh, environment in a state where it can be utilised tomorrow. The environment will be there. Whether it can be utilised or not becomes the question. 
the other reason I've used this slide here and, and what I need to talk about is the fact that there is a small settlement of about 70 or 80 houses at the end of my road. They watch every day what I do on my farm and to me that is our social licence to farm. The way in which we interact with our communities inside New Zealand I think is incredibly important. Now all of this comes at a cost. I'm incredibly lucky in that we've had uh, capital available in order to do some of this. That is not always going to be the case. Costs on farm are continuing to increase. We may find ourselves limited in our ability to use uh, products like glyphosate. Uh, the EU uh, spoke uh, extensively about that in the last year as to whether they were going to continue to allow the use of glyphosate in farming systems, something that is incredibly important on my operation today. Uh, the current Minister for the Environment has made it quite clear that we're probably reaching the, the production levels now that top out uh, based on the amount of nutrients that we're losing through our systems into the environment. So what I wanted to look at when I went overseas was how can I assist behind the farm gate? How can I grow the value of our product? How can I connect with the consumer in a way that actually brings value back to New Zealand that allows us to invest further behind the farm gate and actually take care of our environment and make a better product. So I think this slide really sums up where I got to. If you look at the left hand side of the slide, we basically supply conventional product today. In the red meat sector of New Zealand, there are a few, a few processes that are starting to uh, make some claims around the product that we produce, but generally we supply into larger food chains or uh, food supply chains with no restrictions uh, on the, the, the type of product that we supply. Interestingly enough, the conversations that I had largely uh, pushed me in the, uh, the manner of the sustainable claims. So no GMO uh, organic systems, of which most people uh, around the world feel that New Zealand farms in an organic manner. Sustainability, believe it or not, they actually appeared interested in whether we were uh, farming in a sustainable manner or not. Uh, and humane. Uh, the, there is a real pressure coming, in, in my experience, uh, around the animal welfare claims that we make and the way in which we farm and whether we can prove that or not. So this is what uh, where most, most consumers around the world feel that their product comes from. So if we want to be different, if we want to tell them that that's not the system that we farm in, and bearing in mind that as I looked at some of these systems, they talk about total mix ration. Now, if they're pulling in multiple different uh, sources of feed, how do they actually know the manner in which that feed has been grown, what's gone into it, what chemicals have been used, and the way in which the, uh, the product arrives at their uh, farm has actually you know, met the requirements that they want. They're incredibly good, however, at producing a very consistent product. And something that I think that we've got to be very aware of is that consistency behind the farm gate is the way in which we can uh, increase value. This, uh, this diagram comes from Global Animal Practice, which is a not-for-profit that's been set up uh, largely through Whole Foods uh, market in the United States. And they've set up a five uh, or five and a half uh, sticker program that basically gives an immediate visual representation to customers in the supermarket around the claims and the manner in which animals have been farmed uh, prior to them uh, being processed. This is what we do. In fact, if I look at where the, the three circles overlap, I think that we can actually claim that perfectly. And under the uh, global animal practice system, we rank as number four. When number one is that the animal is not able to express its natural behaviours and is generally raised in uh, cages and in barns, and you get to number five, uh, and five plus where an animal has never left the uh, farm on which it's been reared its entire life and has not had any, uh, 
any modification, so it hasn't a uh, bull hasn't been steered, uh, no dehorning has occurred. We actually um, rank really well on this system, but we need to develop something in New Zealand that recognises the New Zealand system. We need to have a uh, a discussion about what is appropriate from uh, an animal health and welfare perspective. Now we have minimum standards, but what about how do we recognise the people that go above and beyond? And how do we create a system that ranks the best producers and actually gives people an aspirational target in which to aim for? Uh, I think uh, the second um, issue that comes around uh, animal health and welfare and what we do on farm becomes traceability. And Mycoplasma bovis has been an exceptional example of where we probably currently sit as an industry. We, uh, we had Nate forced down on us uh, from a regulatory perspective. We didn't, as an industry, probably understand quite the implications of why Nate was put in place. Uh, from my understanding, Nate was actually put in place to allow us access into overseas markets because we said that we would then be able to track back uh, if we had a major outbreak of a disease inside New Zealand. Of course, mycoplasma has probably shown that we haven't been able to do that. So we need to develop systems and certifications that we can prove every single treatment that has happened on farm and be able to uh, do that regardless of whose farm it is. We need to make sure that uh, our systems are absolutely flawless because it's only through that system that we can give absolute trust that we can talk to a consumer and say, and, and, or talk to a uh, major food brand and say that you, we are not going to be the weak, weak link in your chain uh, from a, uh, a traceability perspective. One of the most fascinating uh, pieces of, or one of the most fascinating findings for me from, from the research that I uh, undertook was that the business supply chains are demanding more and more uh, accountability and transparency all the way back. It started for me when I um, went to Ireland and I spoke to uh, a major processor there and he said, Origin Green wasn't designed to be our interaction with consumers. What it was, was a business to business assurance scheme to actually uh, prove to the major food and agricultural uh, consumers, to the major businesses that take our product, that we can uh, prove that we are a sustainable model and that what we do on farm we can trace all the way back. I went to, um, and you know, having mulled over this idea for a little bit more, I went and uh, spoke with McDonald's and I was horrified to find that all of McDonald's major beef suppliers have signed up to the Global Roundtable uh, for Sustainable Beef, all except New Zealand. So ha if we, we talk about the fact that we can only feed 30 million people, if we're looking in, in 20 or 30 years' time that there's going to be 9 billion people on this planet, we talk that that, that means that we can only supply 0.03% uh, we can supply food for 0.03% of the world's uh, total population. If, if we want to create value out of, these, uh, out of those people, we need to find a way that we can actually prove that our product deserves to, we, that we deserve to be paid more for it. The Global Roundtable for Sustainable Beef, most of what we actually are talking about is covered under uh, our requirements from the RMA. So air, water quality, management of soils, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we talk about QE2 in terms of that native forests are protected, health and welfare of, of natural ecosystems, native flora and fauna diversity, uh, sustainability of feed sources and what we do around cropping. Uh, consumers want to know how we've gone about producing their food uh, it was interesting to talk to a number of people around the fact that uh, grass-fed systems are what consumers want going forward. And we heard from that, uh, we heard about that yesterday from Ryan. Brands that have a sustainability claim 
are growing at 4% per annum as opposed to brands with no sustainability claim growing at 1%. There is a major change in, in behaviour from large food and agribusiness businesses because they're under pressure from special interest groups who want to check through their supply chain. No one wants a surprise. No one wants to have someone turn up to your restaurant when you're a McDonald's uh, owner and, and question you about where your beef is coming from because they've managed to find a chink in the armour. If we're going to supply into these businesses, then we need to make sure that we are certifying through our processes uh, that, to make sure that um, they don't, uh, they, that they always want to take our product. Uh, consumers are holding companies responsible for upstream sourcing of products and the manner in which that's carried out. We are looking for, they, those large companies are looking for long-term stable relationships with suppliers that they can trust to deliver guaranteed, consistent, high quality and safe, sustainably and eth ethically produced material. The quality of the product will be the selling factor the story only gets us in the door. It's really important that we've got a good story, but to uh, make it to the more discerning customer, we're going to need to actually make sure that when that story gets pulled apart, that there's no uh, skeletons lying in the closet. The final comment that I want to make is around the fact that 90% of New Zealanders now live in cities. We're one of the most urbanised countries in the world which is quite fascinating when you think of how we would say that New Zealand was built. Finally, where's the value lie in doing this? 75% of millennials and 72% of Generation Z or uh, people that are younger than 20 years old are prepared to pay more for sustainably produced products compared to 51% of baby boomers. We need to look towards the future to make sure that we engage with those people and, and recognise that while, this, while I am talking about more regulation and while I am talking about more, uh, certif uh, more paperwork for farmers, it's our ability to connect with that consumer into the future. I'd just like to leave you with, uh, this was a quote of a company that I visited in my travels in South America. Our vision is to be leading farmers worldwide where we farm to feed the world, but also to protect and enhance the environment for future generations. We want to combine the best practical, ethical and scientific know-how with good leadership and organisation. We want to be better farmers. And to me, that should sum up what we want to be as New Zealand farmers. Thanks very much.